Hello, everybody, and welcome to day seven of 28 Days to Master Level Chess Tactics. Today and in the next three days, day seven, eight, nine, we're going to get into Discovered Attack. We're not just going to cover the theme of Discovered Attack, we're also going to learn how to apply a logical and concrete thought process to not just find a theme, but also to find many forcing variations in any position. And I want to emphasize that, that though we are learning about themes in this course, just to kind of put things in a framework, we're also opening our mind. And you'll see that in the thought process, when I go through these, I'm not necessarily looking for any theme. I'm just using forcing ideas and forcing moves, forcing candidates to notice patterns and see if we can apply them and if they work in a specific position. So let's get into this position. It's white to move, and we're starting with a rather basic, but pretty cool example. The material is otherwise equal, but in position, it differs greatly. Now black is threatening a royal fork with the queen and the two rooks, but white has his own ideas. You look at the queen, and it looks like we can just give away a queen, and if you notice that, it also sets up the rook and the bishop for discovery. So I guess you could say it's a deflection or a decoy to draw the king to that square. And that's actually the correct idea in this position. So queen to d8. And now with the king on d8, you can move the bishop. So you get a double attack and a double check which is actually the most powerful and forcing because normally if you get a double check, then the king has to move. Now the king has two options in this position. He can go to c7 or back to e8. If he goes back to e8, then you get this nice kind of Morphe-esque rook on d8 checkmate. And all you need to do is double check what you do if he goes to c7. So the rook is controlling the d file. You can actually bring the bishop in on d8 and deliver checkmate this way. Notice everything's supported. A final and beautiful combination. So let's go back and just spend some more time with this position. If you notice that black, he did make a basic threat. It looks like he made multiple pawn moves and then he moved this knight at least twice in the opening to make a basic tactic. Now, in the opening, you know that you basically want to develop all your pieces and you want to protect your king, and the opening phase is normally over when you connect your rooks. Now, these kind of elements can help you improve from tactical positions to see where the opponent went wrong that led to a forcing opportunity. Let's move on to position two. In this position, it's white to move, and you could pause the video now. From the material situation, you'll see that white is actually, it appears, down a rook. Now, the pawn is threatening this knight, which he could take, but you'd also want to look at forcing moves because obviously white has been sacking a rook or an exchange for activity. What you should notice, obviously, is this kind of pin of the queen against the rook. Now, in discovered attacks, you'll normally have other various basic tactics at play, like a pin, a decoy, or a deflection that sets up kind of the discovery. Uh, and this is no exception in this position. With the queen on the seventh rank and the knight and the rook ready to attack this king, then that should lead you to various forcing ideas. Notice also the b2 bishop is in contact here, and that can kind of set up some kind of discoveries. So you'd look at checks first, something like knight to g5 check, um, but notice that if you play that, then then uh, the rook is protecting the bishop and you can't necessarily take it and get a checkmate in one. Now, so he could just take and it doesn't really lead to anything. So in this position, the correct idea is to play rook to h5. So how do you find this move? Well, you notice the pin on the queen and it seems like logically you'd say, okay, my rook is pinned to my queen, I can't move it. And this is where you need to apply logic in chess. If you have more activity than your opponent, then you can make forcing moves and sometimes a discovery. Although it looks like black can take the queen, you can make a second attack somewhere else. And in this position, rook to h5 makes logical sense because with all these minor pieces and the rook, if the queen takes the queen, then you have to see all these geometric relations with knight check, king back, and of course you can't take because the rook is pinning it. And then you finally get 
this rook to h6 checkmate. Notice that the bishop is pinned against the king and the rook is blocking an escape square. A very beautiful checkmate. So let's look at other moves. Let's say that you play here, rook to, well, I guess you could take the knight. Oh, you'd look at that too. But he plays queen to e4 and you don't actually have anything after that and you're down material. You don't have knight to g5 check and you don't have rook to h5. So what you'd look at next is rook to h5. What if he just takes the rook? Well, you could take the queen, but even more forcing is queen to f5 checkmate. With the queen checking the king, there's no interposition, and the knight covering the h8 square. That's a very nice checkmate as well. So you can see that a discovered attack also has elements of a double attack because while you make the discovery, then normally that discovery leaves an attack on one piece while making another attack on a separate part of the board. So keep that in mind. Now, a common problem I see when trying to solve tactics is trying to always use pattern recognition in tactical solving because you'll try to notice patterns, but there's so many patterns in chess that you can't notice them all and that will lead you to miss something. So this is kind of why I emphasize a more logical thought process to look simply for forcing moves and you'll notice patterns along the way when you see crazy moves like rook to h5. What is another defense if he plays here? So he could play something like knight to d4, cutting off, notice this bishop here, but then you actually have knight to g5 check, and then you have another forcing move, rook takes h6, bishop takes, and then you get a final checkmate on h7. So as you can see, there's a lot of forcing continuations when there's a lot of contact between the pieces, and you kind of need to break it down piece by piece, part by part. And once you've done that, then you can kind of see or notice a pattern, I would say after the fact or during the fact, but trying to solve every single tactic, especially as they get more complicated with pattern recognition, is sometimes unnecessary when you're actually applying a thought process. So keep that in mind. All right, this concludes day seven of Discovered Attack of 28 Days to Master Level Chess Tactics. Tomorrow, we're gonna to look at a more complicated position and try to get further into more complicated aspects of Discovered Attack, as well as going down deep calculation lines so you get more practice at that. Thanks for following along, and I'll see you in the future. Don't fret if you got the solution wrong. There will be another time.